It's official. Your favorite shows are becoming exclusive. Introducing Flix. Beginning July 3rd, F Network will introduce an exclusive enhanced viewing experience for passport holders with access to free content all year long. So sign up for your F Network passport today. It's fast, simple, and free. This former musician morphed his two creative passions of photography and music into one. Hello everyone, I'm Melissa New and welcome to this week's episode of Framed. Being a music celebrity photographer doesn't just happen overnight. Some people sit around and wait for the stars to align, but this artist made the stars align. Let's do this. Steven Taylor, a fabulous, fabulous photographer here in Los Angeles, California. Where are we at, Steven? We're on my uh, sister-in-law's back porch. <laughs> <laughs> After We're... lots of tries to get yeah. to secure cooler places. Not that this isn't amazing, she's listening. <laughs> My, my uncle was a, like a musician and played piano a bunch and then um, his, some of his friends were in a band and I was kind of around it as a kid and then I wanted to be just like him because he's, he's, my family's really young, my dad's only 45 and so his, my, his brother Chris, which is the uncle that I'm talking about, um, yeah. is 12 years younger than him so we're like fairly close so yeah. I just like thought he was the coolest, he's kind yeah. of like a big brother. Um, Anyway, so then that kind of sparked that interest and I started playing uh, like piano lessons as a kid and then started playing guitar when I was able to like choose what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was it. I went, I went to college for two years for music but dropped out to do photography. So why would you drop out? Um, Cause, because I'm music not... is what you started in, right? Okay, so and... yeah, I don't like school. I don't actually, I'm kind of like a bit irresponsible with things that I've like, I just don't like uh, structure, I guess, okay. I like kind of freak out. Okay. But, um, so school wasn't working at all, I just, I didn't feel like I was learning what I needed to learn for like, real life, I guess. Sure. It just didn't feel right. And then I was starting to, to shoot a little bit and kind of falling in love with that. And then I was actually working at Diesel, the uh, clothing store. Yeah. And a band paid me $2,000 to do a photo shoot of them, but like, and I wasn't a photographer, and um, and I was like, I'm rich, and just like <laughs> quit, I just like quit my job, and that was it. And luckily, I was young enough that it kind of grew, like the business grew with my needs, so I was able to not, I didn't have to do like have another job because I was living with my parents. You know what I mean? And yeah. then moved out as it grew, and it just kind of like. Worked. So what is it that this band saw in you? Here you're working at Diesel at the cash register and they wanted you to take their photos. How does someone just suddenly get a $2,000 gig? I made, I had the coolest MySpace page ever. <laughs> um, I had a lot of friends that were really good at like coding and all that and then mm. I, I knew how to use Photoshop. Mm. Um, and so I would take their old photos and make them way cooler. I would just kind of like I mean, back then we thought it was cool. Now it's awful. It's just like <laughs> unsharp mask, um, which is embarrassing. Now, but um, they just thought it was awesome, and I was like, if I took the photo yeah. and I could plan for it to like, you know, know what I'm doing ahead of time, and they bought it. They bought it, and you <laughs> were like, rich. They trusted me. Um, it turned out good. I think for what it was, they've you know, 
It was good. Yeah. It was good. Right now, as, as you are as an artist right now, what is your style? I don't know. I... <laughs> When you go out on a shoot, what is it that you're that you're searching for? Like what? You know? So yeah, that that's easier for me to answer. Okay. I think. Okay. Um, I, it's never I'm like not a gear driven person. I don't like geek out over the newest camera. It took me like <laughs> a year and a half to buy the Mark II the yeah. 5D. I just like don't care, um, and I, I use one lens most of the time. So. Cool. When I'm shooting someone, if I were to shoot you, I wouldn't. I normally don't try to go for like the most beautiful picture that anyone's ever seen kind of across the board. It's more the most beautiful photo that you've seen of you type of a thing, mm. where you feel captured, or like, it's like an honest picture. So it's not so much about like the technical, like having lighting perfect or whatever it is. It's just like as long as whoever I'm shooting or whatever I'm shooting, I feel like it's an honest like representation of them. That is really cool. Is really I don't know how that would transition in the question about my no. style, because I, I don't know. I mean, it just depends on who it is, you know. Yeah. Los Angeles is kind of when I like would say that I was doing this full time. So it's been about three years yeah. that I've been here. Yeah. Um, and the first one that I had of note, I guess, was the band Incubus. Uh -huh. And the most recent was Common, it's a new mm -hmm. record. Mm -hmm. And so it was Incubus kind of like, all right, I've landed. This is what I'm going to do. Uh, the Incubus shoot was interesting because it was. It came through, there were some like indie bands that I was working with and they all had this manager um, named Jason and he was talking to me about managing me and um, was like, I know all these musicians, it's gonna be perfect for you. You don't yeah. need a, like a photo agent, you need a music manager. Yeah. And so in my head it was like, that's genius. But um, it wasn't. And uh, <laughs> we worked together, like not exclusively, but a little bit. Uh, and he brought a couple shoots my way, but one of them was that Incubus shoot and it was because I really wanted to shoot a band called Maroon 5 at yeah. the time, and he was really good friends with their management, and I guess Maroon 5's manager recommended me to, to Brandon Boyd, the, the singer from right. Incubus, yeah. and he's a photography lover. He actually like geeks about cameras and like film and knows more than I do. It was kind of like ext actually extremely intimidating. Right. Um, but it was really his decision. I think they were looking to use someone new, like a young guy. Mm. That, that's what I was told anyway. They didn't want to use the people that they've always used and wanted something new. So right. out of the people that their friends sent them, they, they chose me, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. And then it was, the shoot was just really me and Brandon, like talking it out. What do you want to do? How do you, how do you want to do it? And yeah. it was really personal, which was cool. That's, how, that's what I was going to ask you. When, you. when you work with these big celebrities that probably have a ton of photo shoots, you know, how is it that they contact you and say, okay, do you, I mean, do you collaborate or do you work with the art director? Is it more of a personal communication between you and the artist like it was Incubus? Yeah, it, it actually has been. It wasn't intentional. I mean, I have relationships with labels and yeah. magazines where there are like art directors and things mm -hmm. like that. But a, a lot of the jobs that you would want to talk about, I guess, are, are things that I've uh, gotten through just like being around and being friendly with people and it yeah. just kind of turned into something. Mm -hmm. the, the same thing with, with Common recently. It was, um, I met his old assistant through a shoot that I was doing because we used her house to shoot it. And mm -hmm. We became friends and she was like, oh my god, Common, we love you. And then yeah. she told him about me and he was like, no. He was like kind of weary of someone new because really? he's very like very family oriented. Oh, if wow. you're in, it's like family. Yeah. Um, I was around a bunch and he just kind of like warmed up a little bit and then now it's like we've been to Haiti together and yeah. we're going to Sundance together and yeah. done a ton. So So when you shoot you want to build a relationship with, with I your like client. It. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I love about it. it's more the interaction, like what we're doing here. Yeah. But not so much the technical stuff. So mm -hmm. it's more it's more that. That's what I like about it. Mm -hmm. So even even if it was like a setup shoot where there's art directors and there's like all that pressure, I still like really try to slow it down and within that setting kind of have it be personal mm -hmm. if, if it's possible. Sometimes you don't connect and it's it's a job, you know? Right.
this guy called and uh, he was like, I'm starting this hip hop blog. And he sounded, it sounded just like as shady as it could get. <laughs> and, um, but he flew me to Atlanta and I shot Young Jock, this rapper. And at the time that was a, like a really good, a really good gig. Mm -hmm. And came back home and it was like seven months later, I get a call, I didn't hear a word from him. He didn't actually even get the photos from me from the shoot that I did of that other rapper. Right. He just like, I just shot it and he just never called me back yeah. ever. Yeah. So I was like, uh, all right, no responses to emails, nothing. And then I get a call. And it was really, really early in the morning. And uh, he said, do you want to shoot Snoop Dogg? And I was like, I mean, yeah, but I don't even know why I answered this phone call. Because yeah. it's like, you're as flaky as it gets. Right. And, uh, and he convinced me that it was real and he was serious. And again, back to Atlanta. And I show up at what I think is this, like, a shoot that was set up, like, produced. Yeah. You know, I, I'm thinking I'm showing up to a studio, and, uh, <laughs> this is funny, and uh, <laughs> I get there, and it's it's a listening party, and so it's just, like, 60 people in a, in a recording studio, not a photo studio, and the people at the door, it's like a list, like a party, and they're like, we do not, we don't know what you're talking about, we don't know who <gasps> this guy is that you're saying, and I was like, this is, I feel a little, like, is there someone else I could talk to? Yeah. And so it was kind of one of those things. I was like, this is crazy. I can't even believe it. And I was there yeah. with one of my best friends, who's a photographer as well, named yeah. Taylor Jones. Uh -huh. And um, he came down from Nashville to help me. And we were just like pumped. Oh, yeah. Because we were going to shoot him. And it was yeah. going to just be like, I don't know. He's been with me a ton of, on a lot of like really cool stuff. Uh -huh. And um, we just like made a decision right then that we weren't good. We we're going to like fight to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> and so. I was just, we flew from Los Angeles to Atlanta. He drove from Nashville and we were just, we're sitting at the door. It's like, why not just give this our all? So we just kind of like wiggled our way through it. I like, I don't even know. I don't remember what I said, but it worked. They let us in and I was like, where's press? Yeah. <laughs> and so they put us in this like back room and I had like a full, I had lights and like backdrops and all kinds of stuff. It was like a photo shoot. Wow. And we waited around and it was a few hours and um, he, uh, he goes out, Taylor went out to use the bathroom, and he's like, they're vacuuming, no one's here. And so I was like, this is unreal, I can't believe this <laughs> is happening. so mad. <laughs> I couldn't believe it was happening. So then I was like, I found someone, I was like, is, is Snoop still here? And they were like, he's upstairs, but they're getting ready to leave. So I went up and like talked my way into his room, and he kind of overheard the conversation that was going on, and um, was like, you know, what is this? And so I told him, I was like, I've been waiting for hours. I, was, I flew here from Los Angeles and he like cut me off and was like, you're from Los Angeles? And I was like, yeah. And then he talked, I have gray hair and he was like talking about my hair. And then, <laughs> and he was like, well, you gotta prove yourself. And so he had these girls with him and he was like, I need you to shoot these girls. And I was like, um, what do you mean? He's like, just, just take a photo of these girls. And I was like, okay. And I had already set up an on-camera flash for the room. I had like peeked in the room and like had it ready for yeah. that, just in case that was like the only opportunity. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I was like, okay. I uh, mean, were they clothes? Sit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just like, <laughs> like groupie girls. They all had the same T-shirt that like had the name of the Got record it. on. It was just Got like, it. whatever. So they um, put them all on this couch, and I took one photo of them, and. Like showed him the back of the camera. It was really awkward, and he just he liked it. I don't know what in the world he was like thinking, but he was just like, "That's sick." And then looked at his manager. This happened. This is a true story. True story. He looked at his You're manager and was like, "I'm going with him." And his manager was like, "No, we're leaving. We can't do this." And he was like, "No, no, we're going. We're going to do this." Like, he he's like, "He seems like a cool guy. I'm going with him." So we yeah. go down, and like two and a half hours later, we hung out for like two and a half hours. Cool. And it, me and Taylor kept looking at each other like, this is not happening. <laughs> but, but again, it was like the personal, like that's yeah. what made that fun. And I mean, he smoked a lot during that time. <laughs> and so most of the photos I have of him are, are him smoking. And right. I shot a bunch of other rappers at that time too, because he just like kept having friends come through. Really? Because they're at a recording studio. Yeah. So like, uh, not not as big as him, but other rappers sure. that in that community are, are well known like came in and he was like You need to shoot them too. And it was just like extremely friendly. Wow. And since then I shot him for an Adidas thing as well, really? which is like Interesting. It's just like Adidas. funny to, to see it. Well, what I love about that story Stephen is that 
gigs just don't show up on your door. You have had to beat down doors. You had to beat down the door and really you had to be patient. You had to utilize your skills as a person, not just as a photographer. So that is a really cool story for me to hear. Um, yeah, that's, it was a, that's a, one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah, no, that is really cool. For sure. That is sick. All right, so you, you're gonna show us a pretty cool shoot. And do you wanna talk about the shoot? Yeah, it's of an artist named Dave Barnes. Um, I was a fan of, of his for a while, and I just recently shot the promotional and packaging stuff for his new record. I think that's coming out in a couple months. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and yeah, it was, it was a kind of a random, a random call from his, his manager, just like, do you want to do this? Are you available at this time? And I don't, I don't even know if they knew that, like, I was as familiar with his work as, as I am. Yeah. But um, again, with the the music stuff, as like a guitar player, like I really looked up to a bunch of singer songwriters, right. and he was he was like right in that at that time when I was like all all about it. That's when he was like, touring a bunch and mm -hmm. in the genre that I liked. And mm -hmm. So. Um, so yeah, how did you come a, up with the shoot? How did you, I mean, you talked to his people and... He, um, yeah, we, we all got on a conference call, which is fairly typical for those things. And he was just kind of like talking about what, you know, what he was looking for. And I, he wanted something natural and to feel like, like it was captured. Obviously it's, it's promo. So he was like, you know, looked his best, but within that, like to, to an honest representation of, of who he is and where he's at in his life. And, um, I think the record is called Stories to Tell, mm -hmm. um, and so I, I feel like that's why why he wanted to work with me, and that's what we went for. So there was, you know, the the basic studio stuff, which I, th I think is going to be the cover, um, and then the packaging is just photos from the day we we drove around town and got lunch and yeah. took photos of random stuff in the studio and goofed off a lot, as you'll see in the yeah. video footage. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun. He's yeah. a really funny guy, so we, yeah. had, we had a lot of fun. Cool. Great. Yeah. Hi, my name is Steven Taylor, and I am a photographer of musicians, mostly, and I've just been framed. Did I, did I do it right? Should I do it again? <laughs> <laughs> Frame Season 3 was brought to you by Bay Photo Lab. Like the music? Special thanks to Triple Scoop Music. Frame Network giveaways are brought to you by B&H. Head to giveaways.framenetwork.com for your chance to win. Find out more about the equipment used in this episode on framenetwork.com.